Okay, moms, especially moms of boys, this segment is for you. When you want your son to open up to you, it's not just what you say, but it's how and when you say it. So Dr. Nina Riostoria joins us now to discuss this topic. Of course, I'm doing this segment with you because yes. I have four boys. Yeah. And the communication, because I don't have girls, I can't really compare, but I will say that the communication that a mother has with her sons mm -hmm. is, is very unique. It is. And it has to be exactly the right type of communication. It, it is different than communicating with the girls because for women, that the moms that have girls, it's just easier. They, they want to talk. Mm -hmm. With guys, it's going to be a little more challenging. And I know Because we don't, women, we don't <laughs> understand men. We're always confused by them. Right. And then you go ahead and raise four of them. And yes. Yeah, and I know it's from just from the segments we've done. It sounds like you're doing some great things with your sons, and so maybe I'm going to validate some things that you're already doing, and you can, you know, let yeah, the you know, we know. were talking about it in the makeup room, and um, yeah. Colleen, our producer, was was asking me, you know, what are some of the things you do with your boys, and and my biggest tip to moms of boys, if you want them to open up to you, is the first time they do because they'll try it and I don't know what age it'll be. Maybe it'll yeah. be when they're a little bit younger and puberty starts to hit and they might have a question or whatever. The first time they open up to you, it's imperative that you answer them the right way, in yes. the right manner, because if you don't, I feel like they'll never open up to you again. I, I think that's key, and you said in the right manner, so what is in the right manner? And I'll tell you just from what, what I know that works, and yeah. you tell me if this works for you. Well, so for yeah. me, um, yeah. I, I, I was sure to, to temper my reaction, mm -hmm. um, because have the boys have come to me yeah. with, with several different things, and, yeah. and I tried really hard not to ever act shocked, not to ever act angry, not to ever act judgmental. Uh -huh. I was always just like, kind of like they would be coming to you if, yeah. if we were one of your clients. Right. So you're just present with them. Your tone is mm -hmm. nice. You don't overreact. And the biggest thing that I know teen guys and from working with them is they said, I just want my mom to listen. I just want her to validate my feelings. I think if, it, if they walk away from the segment saying, okay, I need to validate my son's feelings bad or whatever the mm -hmm. next, that feeling mm -hmm. is, that is key is let them express themselves and be okay with whatever they're expressing. They might be angry, they might be jealous about something, but just to just to label that feeling mm -hmm. for them is so important and not to dismiss it. Not to say, oh, you shouldn't be jealous or angry over yeah. that. And just be really, um, just be in tune with their feelings and then listen. Um, I know it's so easy for moms like, oh, you know, maybe she didn't mean that or you wanna give mm -hmm. advice, you wanna encourage them and lift them up. They don't want that. What they want yep. is just you to go there with them and just be present, like you were, you, like you are yeah. with your sons. Yeah, and it's interesting because I have asked the boys at different times, "Do you want to know what I think, yes. or or should we just talk it out?" You know, uh -huh. and they'll be real honest about, "I don't know." It's just, and when they start like that, I'm like, "Okay, they just want it. They just want to talk it out." But Let's you're also doing. So, you're, you could just be a model for that. <laughs> for moms. But you're also asking, "Look, do you want? Do you want to hear my opinion or thoughts on this, or you just want me to listen to you?" Mm -hmm. And your sons are telling you. I had a client that came in, for, uh, he had a really bad relationship, he was really depressed, didn't have a good relationship with mom. Um, a few months later, things are going better overall. And he says, you know, I can talk to my mom now. And I said, well, what do you think it is? Why do you think, it's right when the segment was going on, I said, why do you think you can talk to your mom now? What is it different about your mom? And he said, you know, she's not jumping at me when I walk in the door, asking me questions, what's wrong, and probing me, because he was really depressed. He mm -hmm. says, she's just available when I need to talk with her, and she listens, and she just sits there, and she doesn't try to give advice. Mm -hmm. And that makes the biggest difference, and that's why I'm able to talk to her more. I so, love yeah. that. And just be encouraging and positive. Uh, really quick, I want to tell about a study that was done with 99 um, kids that were in a psychiatric ward for committing suicide or attempting it, about to attempt it. And what they found are the kids that are really hurting like that, that their family environment has invalidation. They're not. They're dismissing their feelings, not allowing them to express themselves, not allowing them to express their opinions. And for that reason, they hold it inside because mm -hmm. society already is giving you negative messages. Mm -hmm. The home should be a safe place where they can express their opinions and not be dismissed about it. You that know? is such a fantastic point. And yeah. I think that it's so, it's, it's, it's hard as a parent yeah. sometimes just to allow your children to unload on you, you know, to share all their feelings because like you said, you know, you want to fix it and you want to give yeah. them advice. And, um, you know, a lot of times when my kids tell me things, I'll go, you know, I remember when that happened to me. Yeah. I totally know how you feel right now. Yeah. And like just saying that, they're like, and, and I also notice that in, in the quiet times that we'll spend together, like, yeah. like just laying there watching TV together is when the conversations kind of start to happen. Right. And you can tell when they're starting to open up on a topic. Of course, my boys are older now, so it's always, you know, girls and sex and, you know, those mm -hmm. kind of things. But, but um, and you're spending time with them, so you ha allow that opportunity for conversation mm -hmm. and you're not saying anything. And that's a lot of times when the guys are going to be expressive and talk. Yeah. Yeah. I love this yeah. I, because I always need I always need improvement. I think every parent does as our kids grow because 
They yeah. do, and point out the positives because you know I know teens do a lot of things that aren't okay, but when they're doing something right, let them know. Encourage. They need so much encouragement today, especially around 15, 16. They need it a lot. Tell them how great they are <laughs> right now, Mom. Call, text them on their phone, even if they get in trouble in class. Tell yes. them how great they are. Yeah. Um, you can watch this segment again by going to our website, thebroadcasttv.com. Thanks for being here. Always love when you're here. When we come back, we are heading to our music studio to meet a rock uh, cellist whose passions know no boundaries when it comes to her music. It's so interesting the way she's doing rock music with this beautiful instrument. Stay tuned.